The Comedy Hour continues now on 7, and Roy Mallard's in the doctor's waiting room in People Like Us. Hello, I've got an appointment with Dr London at 8.30. 8.30. Ah, Mrs Collins. That's right, yes. Am I too early? I'm afraid Dr London isn't in yet, so I can't tell you that. Oh, I see. Uh, if you'd like to take a seat over there. Oh, I see. Can I help you? Yes, Hello. Hello. Yeah. Um, is Dr. Palmer in yet? I'm afraid he isn't yet, no. No. Ah. Are you all right? Because there is a practice nurse on site until one of the doctors... Are no, 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 it's not. I'm not. I'm from the BBC. We've got a room where you could lie down quietly. If that no, no, no. It's, I'm, I'm Roy Mallard. I'm expecting to be spending the whole day with Dr. Palmer. Look, well, if it's that serious, you may well find that he'll refer you to the hospital. No, 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 no. no. BBC Radio for all people like us. It's, it's for a programme I'm making. Uh, with... Sally, uh, did Dr. Palmer say anything to you about a Mr. Maddock? Matlock. Maddock. It's Mallard, actually. I don't think so, no. Why? Well, I've got this gentleman here. Oh. Yeah. There is a practice nurse on site till one of the doctors arrives. Right. No, uh, no. My name is Roy Mallard. Neville Palmer has been a partner in a general practice in Thorpe St. Andrew in Norfolk for 25 years. At one time, Thorpe St. Andrew was a village in its own right. Nearby Norwich wasn't far away, obviously, if it was nearby, but the city's expansion this century has meant that these days Thorpe has become part of a, a much bigger, well, a much bigger Norwich, really. At 8.15 on a Thursday morning, it's still early, and the open-plan reception area of the Friarsgate Medical Centre is sparsely populated. Uh, what time is your appointment? Oh, uh, well, I, actually, I haven't got an appointment. Oh, you better go before me, then, when he arrives. Right, right. You, that's... Um, it won't be long now, don't worry. Right, good, yes. Uh, have you finished that copy of Cosmopolitan? Uh, yeah, yes. Okay. There's an atmosphere of studied relaxation. This is curiously neutral territory, as if some who sit waiting for the start of morning surgery, their ordinary lives temporarily in abeyance, are reluctant to acknowledge the unspoken common secret which they've come here to confess. With others, on the other hand, it's quite obvious what's wrong with them. A skin complaint, or they're just very fat. Mr. Marlon. Mr. Marlon. Mallard? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. you know, my receptionist has told me about you, and, uh, gosh, yes, I think we'd better try and squeeze you in first. Yes, right. It's Roy Mallard. Yes, yes. yes. Well, come on through, and we can have a chat. All right. It's actually it's very simple. simple. Just one minute. I'm yeah. doing it for people like us. I think we've made an arrangement. And as I understood it, we brought it back from next Tuesday because you were on oh, holiday. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I'm so sorry. I forgot to warn the reception desk you were coming. I do apologise. No, that's all right. Then I must say, you're one of these people who sounds very different from the way they sound on the phone. Yes, it's my producer that you've been speaking to on the phone. Really? Yes, Jane. Well, I'm just glad we've sorted all that out. Right. Well, that's the first problem of the day, crack, then. Yes. <laughs> and uh, you might as well get up and put your shirt back on like that. Well, oh, right. Yes. Good. Good. And, uh, and you've always had that, have you? Yes, always, yes. Yes. Good. It's nothing to be worried about, is it? From now until 11 o'clock, Neville Palmer will see a succession of patients at the rate of one every ten minutes. Some of them may just want a bit of reassurance. Others may perhaps be in the early stages of a serious illness. Uh, so, of course, well, they'll want reassurance, too. In fact, they'll need more reassurance. Reassurance is obviously very important. Mr. Ascombe, sorry. Come in. Hello, yes. What's he doing here? Hello. Oh, we, we met earlier in the um, waiting room. Oh, yeah. yes. So, what can I do for you? Yes, well, I'm wondering if I've got arthritis in my knee. Mm -hmm. And what makes you think that? Because that's where it hurts. Mm, I see. I'm just having a look at your card here. It's a while since I've seen you, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'm sorry about that. I haven't been very well recently. Well, let's have a look at this knee then, shall we? If you'd just like to roll your trouser leg up. Mm -hmm. It's my left knee. Yes, yes, I can see yeah. that. Now then, uh, right. Um, and uh, what kind of pain is it exactly? What kind of pain? Yeah, is it like a sharp toothache? It's in my knee. It, it, it just feels as if, you know, it shouldn't be there. I don't know about that. I mean, if it's knee pain, that's where it ought to be. I guess I see. And is it worse in the mornings or the afternoons, or is it there all the time? Oh, that, that's difficult to say, really. It's worse when I go for my walk. Mm -hmm. Or when do you go for your walk? In the morning. Uh -huh. So it's worse in the morning, then. <laughs> now, uh, can you just uh, straighten your leg for me? S straighten it? Yeah, I mean, uh, as you said, just sort of uh, stick it up. Um, 
look, look, if I, if I just sit down here for a moment, can we just do, um... <laughs> I can't actually do it myself. It's my knees. <laughs> do, you, do you mean like this? Yeah, this is very good. Oh, that... Uh, like this? Oh, sorry, Doctor. <laughs> well, that's... That's very good. Very encouraging. And you haven't noticed any obvious signs of swelling? Like what? Well, I suppose swelling mainly. No, not really. A few more questions, a few more simple tests... And then a few more questions and some more tests. It wasn't long after a few more questions before a diagnosis and a decision had been reached. Uh, so you don't think it's arthritis then? Well, to be honest with you, Miss Raskin, I think that what we're really talking about here is a 67-year-old knee, and that's bound to cause problems from time to time. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Because I'm only 63. Right. Well, uh, can I put my shirt back on now? Oh, yes, of course. Between patients, as Neville was making some brief notes on Mr. Askham's record card, I was able to ask him how he thought the first consultation of the morning had gone. Well, it's always nice to be able to feel that you've sent someone away happier than they were when they arrived. Doesn't it actually irritate you that a lot of people come to see you who aren't actually all that ill? Oh, I suppose it depends on what you define as illness. I think that all of us decide that we're ill from time to time, but the point is that it is a decision. And People make that decision at quite different points. So, it would be possible for two people to have exactly the same set of symptoms... Mm, if it's something contagious, yes, of course. Uh, ...the same set of symptoms, and for one of them to decide that he was ill, and the other one not. Mm, I see that nearly every day. Any specific examples? Yesterday, Monday, last Thursday, Wednesday. Yes, yes. With Mr. Ascombe's card brought up to date, we were going to have to pursue this later. Well, we weren't going to have to, of course, because, I mean, the point is we couldn't pursue it now. Mrs. Newton. Yes. Hello. Hello. What's he doing here? Oh, oh. just ignore me. Hello. Um, don't worry about um, your confidentiality won't be... Uh, I'm just... Should I get this microphone a bit closer? Just treat me as a... Treat me as a doctor. Huh? That's what I'm trying to say. Fine. Well, don't treat me as a doctor. Treat me as a doctor. Good. 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 So, I'm... Uh, just have a look at your card here. It's a while since I've seen you, isn't it? It has been recently, yes, but it wasn't at first. Right. Well, how are things? I'm really not sure where to start. I'll start anywhere. And much hotter at night. And so the morning unfolded its crop of short human dramas. In each case, okay, Neville's then. challenge was to piece together the story which linked the separate components of these accounts together, oh, even yeah. when the patient wasn't no, aware no, of the story no, themselves. No. Far enough now. Gosh, yes. And I can do this too, look. Good grief, that's extraordinary. At some point, a cup of much-needed coffee appeared. One cup, for Neville, and it was hardly surprising that morning surgery had overrun by half an hour by the time the last of his consultations was drawing to a close. Ken, a self-employed plumbing and heating engineer in his mid-forties, has come in complaining of recurrent headaches and blurred vision. Okay, now, can you keep your eyes open and look straight ahead? Oh, yes, I do that a lot. Yeah, no, what I meant was, can you do it now? Oh, right, yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good now. <coughs> Don't worry about this little light, I'm just... Uh... A wall. Right, yes, now I'm, I'm just going to have a quick look. Good, good. And now if you can keep your head still and look to the left. Another wall. Yeah, right, okay, yes, okay, thank you. And now, keeping your head still again, if you can look to the right. A big window. Okay, and just turn your head a little bit. No, I give up. What? What's that thing over there? Uh, hello, Roy Mallard. Yeah, oh, sorry about that. That's all right. Okay, that's okay. Right. That's fine. Thank you. Can I roll my trouser leg down now? Although it was now nearly twelve o'clock and morning surgery was finally over, the day itself was only just beginning. Well, it was about halfway through, obviously, sort of midday, really. But um, well, Neville still had the rest of the day in front of him. Which is true of everyone, at any point in the day, in fact. His next task was to deal with some of the vital administration that the morning has so far generated. Over in the shared office behind the reception desk, there's a pile of repeat prescription forms waiting to be signed, together with a freshly made cup of real coffee steaming away on the desk beside them. For him. And some biscuits for him, too. In some ways, this is a routine activity, but as with everything else that he does, attention to detail is absolutely crucial, and he always has exactly three when biscuits. You say swollen, how swollen exactly? Mm-hmm. And it's not normally that shape. 
Back in the privacy of the consulting room, there are phone calls to be returned from patients who have called during surgery hours wanting to speak to the so doctor. It's worse at night then. And is it warmer than normal to the touch tool? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. But if you did normally touch it, do you think... After that, there's a series of letters to be dictated in cases from this morning's surgery which he has decided to refer on for more specialist consultation with, well, people like specialist consultants. And chronic infection of the maxillary sinus, open brackets, right side, dash, as you look at it, close brackets, with persistent nasal discharge, open brackets, green stroke, yellow stroke, brown stroke, red stroke, yellow... Oh, no, I said yellow. Uh, no, struggle that. Correction. Open brackets. Discount. In the area of the lower cheek. No, um, strike that. Uh, no such thing as the lower cheek, is By it? now, it was after uh, half past twelve, and I was going to have to leave Neville for a while because I had a lunch appointment to keep with someone who I thought might well give me a quite different perspective on the whole business of what it is to be a doctor, what it is to be a patient, and what it is to be healthy. I suppose we could have invited Neville along. That wouldn't have been a bad idea, actually. There's a reason why we didn't do that. I wonder where he we went. Hi. Hello. Well, this is nice, isn't it? <laughs> yes. It is really, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Pardon? Who are you? Uh, it's... Uh, I'm Roy Mallard. We... Roy, right, yes. right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So... Tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I trained as a doctor. Fro Ormrod trained as a doctor and worked as a GP in Norwich until seven years ago when, when as she puts it herself, she saw the light. I saw the lights. It was a time in her life when she was it under was a, a lot of stress life. for various reasons, really. And in fact, it's probably reasons. only recently that she's fact, really begun to understand and maybe even confront those reasons for herself. In the end, it got to the point where she had to take a break from work. She doesn't know what would have happened and if she had tried to keep going, she dreads to think. In fact, though, she never went back and she's had no cigarettes since. And I've had no regrets since. So, I mean, that was obviously a fairly major decision in your life. Yeah, yeah, it was really, mm -hmm. yeah, I suppose. What, what I realised was that I'd been brought up and educated to think of the body as a machine, like a car. Yeah. And I realised that as a doctor and as a person, I'd been ignoring something that was at the centre of everything. Yes, yes, I see, yes. So, so I mean, d did you... Um... I mean, look me in the eye. Pardon? Just look at my eyes. Right, yes. <sighs> It's a very, very difficult thing to do, isn't it? Um, well, it's quite difficult, yes. And the reason for that is that when we look someone in the eye, we're looking at that thing that conventional medicine will never be able to reach. Yes. Now, if we were just machines, that wouldn't be... You can stop now. Yes. You can stop now. Oh, sorry, yes. If we were just machines, that wouldn't be so difficult. So you're talking about a sort of spiritual dimension here rather than something that has to do with a sort of um, scientific... I'm talking um, about eyes. Yes, right, yes, yes. This is lovely bread, isn't it? It's lovely and warm. Eyes are very important. Very. I realise that now. Yes, and so in the um, alternative clinic which you've set up, uh, the emphasis is very much on... Eyes, yeah. Eyes. Yes, yes. And I mean, is it... Um, is it do you, do you, I mean, are you... Do you get many people coming? David came two years ago. David? D d this, and, and he, I mean, so he... Um... I, I married him. Ah. He... Well, we married each other. <laughs> yes, yes. He's, he's gone now. Uh, ah, yes. Well, that's... Under... So, do you think something that... This is something that conventional... You're not happy, are you? <laughs> I wonder if he's forgotten about those coffees. I'll, I'll just go and... The period of time around the middle of Neville's day is unstructured, apart from the fact that there is a period of time before it and another period after it, but, but there's a lot to be fitted in. On our way to the nearby village of Heatherset for the first of his two home visits of the afternoon, I asked him where we were going. Well, this is the first of my two home visits of the afternoon. We're going to a place called Heatherset. Right. It's got to the stage now where just taking my shoes off, if Phil's not around, can take me literally half an hour. Mm -hmm. And have you been trying what I suggested? Yes, but I need to take my shoes off sometimes. Janice is 39. As well as bringing up two children, along with her husband Phil, 
Well, I mean, she didn't bring him up, obviously. Anyway, she's managed to sustain and develop a successful career as a personal assistant with Norwich Union, the region's major employer. But it's over a year now since Janice has been able to work. She's fallen victim to repetitive strain injury, a condition that didn't exist until about ten years ago when people realised that it did. The kettle's just spoiled, but uh, you see, that's another thing. Goodness knows how long it would take me to pour you a cup of tea. Oh, no, that's OK. Uh, well, I mean, we're not actually in a hurry, are we? we you're, I mean, you're, you're, you're still finding it difficult to grip things. Oh, yes, it's, it's got a lot worse since the last time I saw you. Or, you know, I mean, I, I could make some if you want. Or, or coffee. Just try to close your fingers and make a fist for me, could you? I can't, you see? What about trying to pick up something like that cup? I couldn't. Just try for me. Oh dear, yes. That is a bit worse, isn't it? And is it the same in both hands? Yes. Well, perhaps now would be a good time for some coffee, if you'd like uh, me to... Not for me, thanks. Right. No, thanks. I've had too much already this morning. Yes. It's kind of you, though. Oh, no. I just thought, you know, it might be helpful. Uh, actually, uh, there is a dustpan and brush behind the swing bin. Right. Right. Um, It's becoming clear that Janice's condition has now reached the stage where she requires more specialist treatment than that which Neville was able to provide as a GP. Well, at the hospital back in January, and he said then that apart from physiotherapy, there was nothing really that they could do for me because no one was sure exactly what causes it. And this was Dr. Koss? I don't, I don't know, I can't remember his name. Uh, what does Dr. Koss look like? Well, that's unfortunate. I know his name very well, but I can't remember what he looks like. Shame. Yeah. He didn't say anything about injections. Uh, no, he didn't. No, uh, why? Well, I'm just thinking that that may be something worth considering. Injections? Uh, what, what, what of? Well, yes, of course, that, that's something we'd have to decide. Uh, sorry, you couldn't just move your feet for a minute, could you? Oh, I, I see, yes. Uh, uh, thank you. Yes, that's great. Thanks a lot. Uh, is that OK? Yes, that's fine. Thank you. In the end, it was decided that Janice should go back to the hospital for a further series of x-rays and blood tests and that they should talk to Dr. Koss, if they could locate him between them, about injections. Hello. Hello. Is that Mrs. Mansbridge? Is your husband there, Mrs. Mansbridge? This is Dr. Palmer. Yeah, well, that's right, I was, but you see... Yes. The visit has taken a lot longer than Neville had originally anticipated, even though no one had had coffee at any point, or any other kind of drink. So, outside in the car, he's decided to phone ahead to Paul, a recovering alcoholic who's been fighting a long battle with depression and whom he was to visit next, to explain that we're going to be late. Oh, uh, has he? Right. I see, yes, yes. In the event, though, it turns out that Paul has decided that Neville has forgotten all about him and probably never even intended to come in the first place anyway and has gone off to the pub in a half. Oh. Oh, well. <laughs> so what does that mean in terms of your schedule of the day? Well, there's plenty to do. Oh, yeah, the letters to read from consultants and test results where I've referred patients on promotional material, mm -hmm. any new research from the drug companies, more repeat prescription forms to sign, that sort of thing. So the old saying that if you want to find your way to a doctor, follow the nearest golf course in the afternoon isn't, in fact, true at all. Oh, my goodness. Those days are long gone, really. And in any case, I think it was, if you want to follow a doctor in the afternoon, find your way to... Uh, no, no, no. No, hang, hang on. on. It, no, look, no. if you want to spend the afternoon no. following the nearest... No, no if you uh, want to tell no. whether it's morning no. or afternoon, yep, follow, follow... No, go to the... No, if, no, if, no, if, if it's, it's the afternoon and yeah. you want to tell... Um, if, you, if you want to find your way to the nearest golf course, then follow oh, a doctor. That's it. That, in the afternoon? In the, uh, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. yes. No, no, no. I don't think that ever was true anyway. And a lot of doctors today would actually be quite offended by that picture of what we do. Yes. <laughs> it's a fair old time to get round any decent eating old golf course. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Well, do, do you play golf then, yourself? Oh, you know, I sort of, um, well, I, well, I wouldn't say I play golf. But you, um... Well, you know, I, uh, I... Yes. Oh, well, because, because there's a... 
there's a little nine hole just over at Easton. I mean, uh, I don't know whether you're particularly bothered about lunch. Well, I, well, I know. I mean, I, well, I wouldn't mind a coffee or something. Christ. Good shot. Right. Yeah, got underneath it a bit. It's oh, fantastic. Yeah, uh, sliced it a bit too, but shouldn't be too bad. So, uh, what are you going to go for, a driver or an iron? Um, oh, well, I think I'll, um, I'll, I'll, oh, sorry, I, um, well, I mean, what did you use? Well, I tend to use this one iron, but perhaps I should use a wood. See what you think. Thanks. Um, oh, yes, that's, um, that's quite, I mean, it's nice, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it isn't a bit heavy in the head for you? No, I don't think so. The head feels just, you know, sort of... Yes, you know. Good, good. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, the only thing to watch, really, is those trees on the brow of the hill. Yes, absolutely, yes. Right. Good. Okay. <gasps> oh. Um. I'll go and, I'll go yes. and get the club back. Yes. Just take it from back there again. Yeah. Right, okay. Oh! It's just a quick practice there. Yes, it's a nice club, isn't it? Well, I think it's got a good feel to it. Yes. Uh, yes, it has, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Ah. Uh, right. Do you think those cows are dangerous? No, I wouldn't have thought so, no. 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 So, was there a moment in your life when you realised that you were going to be a doctor? Oh, yes, there were lots of moments like that. Really? Yeah, well, otherwise it would have been a terrific shock when I actually became one. Right. I mean, for right. a start, there are all kinds of hints at medical school. Yes, yes. I suppose what I'm really asking is what it is in someone that draws them towards medicine in the first place. I mean, is it first and foremost a desire to give help to those who need it? Who? Well, people who are ill. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a very good point. Very good. Yeah. Uh, a, I think there's a place down there where you can climb over. Right. Good. Um, Neville was born into a medical family on both sides. His father was a GP in Herefordshire, and his mother was a doctor's wife. Until he retired. Yes. Sorry, I think it went a long way further left. Really? Right. After university, he went through a phase of rebellion against parental wishes and spent his early twenties in Berlin, determined to build some sort of a life as an abstract sculptor. But then he found out that that's what his parents wanted him to be. So he came back to Britain and enrolled as a medical student instead. Yes, it was the early sixties then, and it was just a great time to be a student in London. Yes. You, you trained in Birmingham, didn't you? Yes. Yes, I was pretty fed up about that. Yes. Of, of the people with whom one might expect to come into contact... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, right. Uh, uh, um, they're heavier than I thought they'd be. Uh, um, of the people with whom one might expect to come into contact with, you know, in the course of a lifetime, yeah. a doctor can have a more direct, I suppose, profound and lasting effect on us than just about any other person, except perhaps someone like a, well, a murderer. Um, anyway, um, is the pressure of that responsibility something that... That you get used to? No, I think a little four iron will do from here. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, I think you've got to remember that the vast majority of people who go to see their GP aren't mm -hmm. as ill as they think they are, even though they think they are. Right, so w what you do in the consulting room is, in fact, on most days, a matter of routine procedure. Yeah, that's why it's routine. So, in some ways, it's a bit like being an airline pilot, then. Tiring. Yes, and more specifically, perhaps, I mean, for most of the time, if a pilot gets the details right, nothing very dramatic happens, but there's always the knowledge that if he gets the details wrong, two or three hundred people could suddenly die. Yes, I see, though, uh, for me, it would probably be one person at a time, wouldn't it? Well, I mean... Unless it was a hell of a mistake. Yes. <laughs> Christ, shot. God, look at that. That really moved, didn't it? You might even try a little sandwich from here. Yes, I was thinking that. Yes, right. Yes, you just, just drop it onto the back of the green. Yes. And let the smoke do the rest. Yep, yep. Or a two iron, yep. Yes. <laughs> yes, well, you know. No, that's interesting. Yes, well, I, you know, I thought I, thought I might as well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Gosh, this... This is well balanced too, isn't it? Well, I think so, yes. Yes. Ah. Oh. Now, I've lost that. It, it um, felt as if it set off to the right. But, um, at least I've cleared those two bunkers. There it is here. Sorry? 
Yeah. All oh, right. Hello, Frostgate Medical Center. And who is your doctor? Well, well, what does he look like? All right. And when you say shifty, what do you mean by that exactly? We were back in Thorpe St. Andrew with ten minutes to spare before evening surgery began. Just about time enough for Neville to make one cup of coffee for himself and drink it. And then it was straight into another two and a half hour test of concentration, stamina and of course endless patience. Not patience, patience. Well, patience as well obviously, but it wasn't pay Well, they're both really, actually. Does it make you nervous when you come to see the doctor? Very, very nervous, yes. Really? Very, very, very nervous, yes. And um, do, you, do you mind my asking what it is you come to see him about? My nerves. Right. Yes, I see. I think a doctor's got to be able to put you at your ease, whatever the circumstances. Yes. I mean, you always feel that your problem's unique to you. You're the only person that's ever had it. Yeah. So it's always a tremendous relief when you realise the doctor's seen it all before. Isn't at all surprised or worried. You know, you're just like anybody else. Yes. You, so you mean, in a way, illness is something which we can all share. Depends on the illness, really, doesn't it? Yes. Well, I mean, I mean, I've got swollen feet. I can't share them, can I? No. No, I, th I think doctors do a tremendous job. Really? Oh, yeah, tremendous. I mean, um, I couldn't do it in a month of Sundays, and I know that because uh, I used to be one. Perhaps we feel about doctors very much what we feel about our parents. They claim to know what's good for us. And though we can delude ourselves that we're free to ignore their advice, that it applies to other people, not us, there's the lingering apprehension that eventually we're going to be called to account. That if we get what's coming to us in life, in the end, It'll be a man or woman in a white coat who tells us what it is that's coming to us. Or well, some sort of doctor's clothing, anyway. Because people who are sort of well, in catering, for instance, wear white coats, of course, as well. But the point is, it'll be a doctor. Oh, God. So, you know, one of the things that's always intrigued me, really, and that's something I've always wanted to ask, who does a doctor go to when he's ill? Another doctor. I see, yes. Well, that must be awkward, though, sometimes. I mean, what happens if you disagree with him or her about what's wrong? Do you ask for a second opinion? <laughs> well, no, that's not an option that's ever open to me, I'm afraid. Since I'm a doctor myself, as soon as I ask another doctor about anything, that already is a second opinion. Yes, well, that must be a problem. <laughs> well, it can be, yeah. <laughs> well, I, uh, don't think you're going to find it now. No. Well, perhaps not. I mean, I'm not actually convinced it cleared the car park. No, well, it might not have done, no. Have you... have you got any more balls left? One now. Right. Roy Mallard would like to give a special thank you to Chris Langham, and also to Jonathan Coy, Felicity Montague, Cyril Jenkins, Kim Wall, James Green, Jane Whittenshaw, and the Barton House Health Clinic. The programme was written by John Morton and produced by Paul Schlesinger. Mm -hmm.